In this video, we're going to talk about uh, the integrations between SOLIDWORKS Enterprise PDM and uh, Microsoft Dynamics. Um, I have uh, a virtual servers running here, one with an Enterprise PDM server, which would essentially be your, um, uh, at least in our case, a SOLIDWORKS vault. So there's uh, SOLIDWORKS data in here, uh, different assemblies and parts. Um, obviously, this could be other CAD files as well or other documentation that um, you would want to send those um, various items to Dynamics. Uh, we also have a Dynamics server running here as well. And you can see this is uh, Microsoft Dynamics AX uh, 2009. And in here, um, there's some bill of material loaded in this um, uh, test database. And there are different items and different bills of material um, loaded into the system. Um, in here, you can see on this, the main columns here, it's showing you the bill of material versus the item, uh, item types, an item name, an item number. And then when you go to the various tabs, you can see different um, uh, defining properties uh, for these various items. Uh, some of these would be defined and set up inside of Dynamics. Uh, but what we're really trying to do with the integration is to um, uh, initially create the item and construct the bill of material to really save uh, all that time that you would uh, otherwise need to spend on Dynamics actually creating the items from scratch and linking and, and building the bills of material. Uh, since that work is already done inside of uh, SOLIDWORKS, and store it inside of our vault, basically what we want to try to do is to uh, integrate the two systems um, and to um, save as much work as possible uh, in creating it in both areas. Um, the first thing you want to look at, if we're back here in the, the PDM system, you can see we have an assembly here. Um, on that assembly, uh, we have a data card, we have a drawing number, a description, uh, things that, might, um, um, that you might want to send to Dynamics, things that you may not. Uh, essentially, through the integration, we can choose which which uh, properties you do want to send, including things like unit measure. And then we can also stamp the card with important things like uh, last ERP sync. Um, so you can see, okay, when was this thing synchronized with ERP last? And then what we can do is we can integrate these uh, updates through our, uh, through our workflow. So when we want to come through here um, with this particular assembly, and let's say we want to uh, request a change, for this particular assembly, it's going to move it to uh, uh, the next revision. In this case, it's going to go to revision D. It's just writing some properties to the card, updating uh, uh, all the parts that are in this assembly. Um, there is an approval process that we uh, that we want to follow, but we're just going to skip through it real quick. Uh, uh, in normal cases, it would send out emails and people would log in and approve their various uh, components. What we're going to do is just go ahead and approve this. And what this is going to do is produce um, an export out of the Enterprise PDM system based on this workflow that's then going to be uh, moved into the Dynamics uh, database. So uh, when I come over here to Dynamics, um, again, what we're looking for is uh, item 10163. And let's look for 10163. We have this uh, bill of material here. Let's look at the different uh, bills of material. So there we have bill material uh, dash C. Um, what we're waiting for is bill material dash D to be dumped in there, and that's uh, going to be loaded up. Um, the adapter really runs um, about every minute, so it'll take about a minute to see the refresh, or you could schedule it to run, um, you know, every half hour or every day, something like that, depending on how often you want the bills material to be synced up. Just going to wait a few more seconds here and wait for that to sync up. And now you see there's a bill of material revision D in there. That's now has a um, the today's date in there, and obviously the quantities and the different things that are in the, that are actually in this bill of material. Uh, if there were new items that were added to this particular uh, uh, bill of material, you would see that here in this list as well. Um, in fact, our next um, 
uh, example would be to actually create some new things inside of Enterprise PDM. Uh, so we're going to take this assembly and we're going to do what's called a copy tree on this thing which is basically going to make a copy but give all new part numbers to the items that we are um, that we're going to release. So we're going to take all these various parts here we're going to regenerate a new serial number for all those. We're going to rename them all with a serial number, which is you know basic functionality in, inside the Enterprise PDM Vault. And then what we're going to do is we're going to drop them into this project here, this engineering project, and go ahead and copy. What this is going to do is build a new structure in SolidWorks, a new assembly, and all new part files, all with new numbers, and then basically rebuilds all this into CAD. So then you could open this up into SolidWorks and start all your part design if, let's say, this was a, um, a new design based on an existing. Um, what we're doing in this case is just basically creating a real quick assembly so we can release this and show you how the integration will build this new assembly from scratch. So we have our new parts in here. An 18346 is what we're looking for. We're going to go ahead and check these in. Again, this could be done in SolidWorks. So uh, all this stuff that I'm doing here with the check-in and releasing of the data, or releasing of these files, can actually be done in SOLIDWORKS as well. You don't actually have to come into the vault directly to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and submit these for approval. And like I said before, normally an email would go out and somebody would actually come and approve these. But in our case, I'm just, just going to approve the, the block of files. Okay, so now this bill of material is being sent to the Dynamics interface. Um, in the meantime, we can take a look at the bill of material as it looks in SolidWorks. We can see there's a part number. Um, you can see all these are named, just basically the part number is just going um, uh, in, a, in a dynamic list here, or in a um, serial list. This is 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. So it's created all these um, uh, as we've created the assembly. Um, we could then you know, check this out and uh, add new parts or take parts away. Uh, whatever you want, uh, and then that would also then be reflected back into, dyna into Dynamics. When we look at the data card, you can see here that um, it was released and checked on the 14th, which is today, and we look at the details here is actually synced to ERP as well. So we're looking for 18346 is the part number we're looking for. And we're going to go in here to Details, and we're looking for 18. 346. We don't have a huge list, so we can just scroll down here. In a typical database, um, obviously, you would search for part numbers and things like that, obviously. So we're going down here to 346, which is our miter saw base assembly. And if we go to the bill of material there as well, we can see the parts are now in there. Quantities are all in there. Um, it's bringing in the unit measure. It's bringing in the item names. Um, and building the links between the bills of material, and you can see this is a release A. If I'd go back and issue another release on the bill of material, it can add a new one, or depending on how we structure it, it could actually just append. Um, and in fact, the way we have our item structured is we're really only revving the bills in this example. Um, the item, if I change the item, it will come through and just update all the properties for me. So with that, that's just an, a, a quick demonstration on how the, the integration works. Um, if you have any questions, um, please uh, visit our website and, and send in information. Thanks a lot.